What kills trees in winter? Why are our bonsai so easily damaged by frost? And what can we do to protect our trees in the winter against frost? Bonsai in general are not killed by the cold itself. Mind you, I am not from the coldest of climates. Our temperatures here rarely drop below minus 10, minus 15 in winter. Unless you're from a climate where minus 10, minus 15 is sustained for a couple of months in a time, probably winter death is not by cold. Desiccation is a much bigger problem. It is the middle of winter, temperatures have dropped and it's getting really cold. So my wife and I decided to take a little holidays and we left the cold. I misjudged the winter. Temperatures dropped from 10 Celsius, that is roughly 50 Fahrenheit, to minus 7 Celsius, which is about 10 Fahrenheit. That meant that all my trees that were still happy and awake all of a sudden were put in a crisper. This tree probably is dead. Which part of a tree is most susceptible to cold, would you say? Well, typically the answer is the branches. But no, that's not correct. The branches can handle cold the best. Roots, however, do not like the cold. Think of it like this, um, a normal tree. A normal tree stands out in the field and in the field the branches are exposed to the wind and to the sun and to the cold. However, the roots grow down into the soil. The soil never gets as cold as the air does. Um, I know now people are going to say, wait a second, but frost always starts at the soil. Um, the first frost in winter is always on the grass. You can see the grass is all white and the car is not frozen yet. That is because cold air drops down. It's not the soil that cools down, it's the air that cools down and that freezes the surface of the soil. The soil, in fact, is warmer than the air. You know this because if you look at pictures from the earth, you see the earth has this molten rock core. It's hot. That's where the lava comes from if you have a volcano. Now this heat continuously moves out through the soil. So the, the soil is warmer than the air and actually lets go of heat throughout winter. So when it comes to winter protection, the first thing that you need to know is that you need to protect the roots from freezing as much as possible. Normally roots can take two, three, four, maybe five degrees of frost. So in Fahrenheit, um, think about when the root ball hits your 24 to 25 Fahrenheit, that's when you really need to start paying attention. This also means that up until that point, you can just leave your trees out in the frost without thinking about it. Mind you, if I say that the branch can take a lot of cold, that is only true of species that are native to your region. So native to your climate. If you live like me up north in Europe and you have species like the olive or pomegranates, they actually do not like the frost all that much. When it freezes more than two or three degrees, you get damage on those trees and in fact they need to be dry. Pomegranates in my garden do better than olives and olives with more than two or three degrees of frost normally move into the shed. I do let them freeze, but that's about it. If it does get colder than minus 10 Celsius, so that is, let me think, colder than 12 to 14 Fahrenheit, that is the point that I really start to think about giving my trees more protection. Now, if you're in a climate where you get lots of snow, the snow actually is a perfect insulator. So if the snow is dry, loose flakes, and not the very wet, yucky stuff that you get around the point of freezing, but the light, airy stuff, let your trees be covered by it. It protects it from wind, it protects it from sun, it protects it from spikes. Within the snow, it usually only freezes a few degrees. It doesn't get much colder than that. It's a perfect insulator. So in winter, if your trees are outside and you get lots of snow, let them be covered with snow completely. Keep in mind, snow gets really, really heavy when it starts to thaw. So if you have trees with very fine canopies or very dense branches, say on Pizzea, then you need to remove the snow as it starts to melt. Otherwise the branches might break. When it gets colder, then minus 10 Celsius, then consider putting them in a shed. That is the latest. Um, I know that there's people who at the beginning of winter take their pots and they put them all in the shed straight away and protect them from frost. I am personally convinced that letting your trees get a little bit of frost is better for the trees. They go into a deeper dormancy. They respond to the natural cycle more quickly. And with that, I think they come out in winter more healthily than when they don't get any frost at all. 
But deep frost in pots means that the roots get very cold and you are more susceptible to damage. So there is this fine balance which you need to find. You need to make sure that the trees do go through their natural cycle of going dormant, getting a bit of frost, and then in spring when they wake up, they need to naturally go through the motions again. Because that's the risk of putting trees in too much of a protected spot. The risk of putting a tree in a shed for the whole of winter means that it will wake up earlier. Temperatures in my shed right now, it is probably about eight or nine degrees in here and outside it is minus one. That means that these trees are just barely dormant here. And as soon as the sun comes out, here temperatures will go up. And at that time the trees will think, okay, spring's there. Let's start growing. And you might end up late February, early March already with the first Japanese maple in leaves. Um, then you need to make sure they get sun, otherwise the growth becomes very long, very long internodes. That is not good for bonsai, which you either need to cut off or you need to put them outside in the sun. Well, if you put them outside in the sun, that's great, but we all know late February, early March, that is the time that there's still frost. And then at night, you need to pick up all your pots again. You need to bring them in and in in the morning you need to bring them out and you'd have this dance you need to bring them in and out of your sheltered spot for quite a few weeks until it is consistently warm enough outside to keep your pots there so for me protect the shelter yes but only if it is really cold and as soon as fro the deep frost is gone my pots move outside again they need to stay as cold as possible i want them to stay dormant as long as possible the reason for this is quite simple again nighttime frost um, we get frosts here until middle of May. So what happens if a tree starts growing in early March? It's been happily growing and all of a sudden at the end of April or the beginning of May with one or two nights of frost again. Yeah, you lose the fresh growth on your trees or you need to put them in the shed. Now, that being said, I am not overly anxious. What I sometimes do if it is only one degree of frost, I just leave the trees there, but in the middle of the night, around midnight, normally that's when temperatures start dropping well into the freezing zone. I take watering can or I take my watering hose and I spray all the trees down and make them wet. This reduces the frost on your trees. This is a common technique used here by fruit growers that when you get a late spring frost, they spray all the trees all night and that protects the buds. So that's what I do when it comes to early spring. Now this is roughly an overview of how I take care of my trees in winter. Um, I'm going to defoliate this tree. This is going to be in the shed for the rest of the winter and in spring I'll do an update and see whether this is lift or not. I'm going to lose quite a few of the branches. Then today I'm going to go out and I'm going to take the rest of my trees off the benches. Um, it's going to be freezing all winter. It is going to be freezing the rest of the week. And my trees are not all that happy at the moment after having the spike two weeks ago. So I'm going to give them a little bit more shelter this year. And in springtime, I'm just going to hope for the best. This was yellow. This was growing bonsai with a bit of a sad message. Keep growing bonsai and I'll see you soon.